Hey everybody, it's Tyler here with Behind the Bumpers, our show where we take a deeper look in the robots and what makes them work. And today I'm here with team number 7636 Robomania out of Chaizhong, Taiwan. And this robot here has been fantastic. Uh, they played at the Hong Hai Regional just a couple weeks ago uh, where they have a great over the bumper intake, a limelight, and a fantastic traversal climber. And to talk more about this robot, I have Daniel, Judy, and Ann, and like I said, we're going to do a full robot overview on this. Uh, learn a little bit more about uh, First in Taiwan. All this coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. If you are planning on attending the World Championship, come meet others in the fun and FRC Discord community with our combined meetup on Friday, April 22nd at 11 a.m. local. Location will be announced closer to the event, and you can stay updated by following in either the fun or FRC Discord. So, Daniel, we're going to start out on your robot, uh, talking about that cargo journey and focusing on your intake. So talk to me a little about uh, what your intake is and also, like, how did you come up with using this type of intake? And did you have any other ideas that maybe you didn't use on your robot? Uh, well, to be honest, we use flex wheels on the front as our intake because the durability of the balls this time aren't as high as the previous season. And we decided to use the... Uh, PC boards on the side. This reason is due to we found out that aluminum was a bendable metal and we did not want that to happen uh, because we after our test drives we found out that they will bend if they get hit. So we found out the PC boards are a much mm, usable solution compared to others. And if you can see here we use a 775 motor to power up the whole system and then using that and then we also use the bumper which we did not take out at like other teams uh some of them took out parts of the bumper but we decided to keep that all intact when you were looking at using a uh over the bumper intake like that um what kind of testing did you do to make sure that the cargo was going to come in correctly uh, actually, we started off doing virtual testing on our drawing stations. After that, we did testing by just making them and then testing them out. We tested a few different ones. We tested aluminum, we tested wood, and then we tested PC board. In the end, we decided to use PC board. Well, let's keep moving on and talk about your conveyor system. So talk to me about uh, how that cargo goes in. Do you use any sensors or anything like that at all? And then uh, how did you, you know, figure out, like, to make sure that the cargo is not going to jam on your robot as well? Uh, looking over here, we decided to use, uh, for the intake, when you see it coming in, and then we use a PC board to direct it with a track. The track is also made out of PC board. The reason of this is because... Uh, of the weight we are worried of the weight because if you can see our whole car is actually a pretty heavy robot and to ensure it not to be uh not to get stuck we decided to grind out the sides we smoothed the sides uh we also added the broom system into it and then this is also powered by a 775 pro motor and then it activates the broom, bringing it up. And then after we are sure of our cargo, uh, we power up these two flex wheels. There's two, there's another one in the inside and that is powered by a separate motor. And after we're sure this is acting as a safety and then we power it up and it goes to the shooting. Well, let's keep moving on and go to your shooter. And Judy's going to talk a little bit more about your uh, turret uh, that you have uh, using some limelight as well. So talk to me about what went into uh, your shooter uh, for this year, Judy. Oh, okay. So for the shooter for this year, we you can, as you can see, it's divided into two parts. First is the turntable at the bottom. So for this um, turntable, this is powered by a 775 Pro, which is right over here. And the power went through the... Um, custom made gearbox over here so it can turn for um, around 140 degree left to right um, 140 degree might not sound a lot in our um, 
might not sound a lot, but in our game, it actually gave us quite a lot of um, advantages, including we can aim the hub quicker and more accurately. And we don't have to be worrying about oh, if we turn left or turn right, we can't be facing the, sh um, the hub. So it makes the whole process uh, a lot smoother. And also for our um, turrets over here, this year we choose to use um, single flywheel. And this is mainly because the, ball, uh, the cargo this year is not as flexible as um, previ previous years. I, um, our team didn't want to compress the ball too much. Um, although if we choose to use double flywheel, maybe the ball won't spin that much in the air, but we believe that the hub this year is actually quite big. So um, double, double flywheel can, do, um, can shoot the ball pretty accurately and um, it's more than enough. One thing I want to ask you on, on your flywheel in particular is that you do have a little bit of a, a, a gap or a space between the two wheels. When you were doing your testing, uh, like why did you end up deciding to have the gap and then versus them close together? And then what kind of results did you see from something like that? Well, because the ball is like the shape of the ball can fit this one very well. We can by using two separate wheels, the ball can like be transport to be sent through a very straight line so that it won't fly to a different direction than what we expect it to be like. Well, I think one of the highlights to keep moving on to is going to be your climber that you have. Uh, your team has had a fantastic traversal climb that has served you very well. So uh, we're going to hand it over to Anne. And first off, congratulations on your Dean's List finalist award at your uh, regional. And uh, talk to me more about what's gone into your climber for this year. Thank you. So our climber can be separated into two parts, the movable parts and the fixed parts. So it works by the, um, the movable parts first extent. Um, using the parachuting line over here, controlled by the Falcon. And so it, so it um, extends and grab onto the mid-run and retracts to let the um, face rods grab onto the mid-run by... Um, so it's like when it's hit on the top, it just grabs naturally onto the, the, the run. And then we use the cylinder over here to push out the um, movable parts and to extend it and retract it to let it swing to the um, the next round and to um, fix it in position using the um, fixed round. Our hanger this year is much better than the previous year. So it's able to climb to a traversal round in under 20 seconds, which is one of the fastest in our original. And one thing special about it is that we use a lot of um, custom-made gearbox, like the shooter. So it's able to um, retract the line very quickly, and um, it's fairly stable throughout the matches. So we've seen a, a few different types of climbers being used uh, by teams. When you were looking at designing your robot, uh, th how did this type of climber fit into what worked best for uh, your robot this year? So because our um, space for a climber this year was pretty tight, so we decided to use this design, which takes up only um, a little um, um, horizontal space. And it's also very stable. Yeah, your team, uh, it's obviously been one of the big highlights and, and a reason why your team has performed uh, so well so far. So 7636 Robomania, thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us uh, about your robot. It's great to hear about teams from all over the world and your robot has been very impressive and performed quite well. So uh, thanks a lot for taking time and we hope to see you at some off-season events this season too. Thanks a lot. Thanks to Striker Careers for their support in this video. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Striker. Striker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Striker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. 
keep the conversation going, and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now, and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.